Slušate prvi sa zvezdama sa Sanjom Veličković. It is a great pleasure to introduce my uh, guest today. Uh, he's one of the most famous world cooks, a person uh, whose show you watch regularly on 24-hour kitchen, uh, Rudolf van Vin. Hi, Sanja. Hello. Good to be here. Thank in you for coming. In your cute studio with lots of vinyl records on the wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So tell me, uh, Rudolf, this is not your first time here in Serbia. You've already been here. So let's start with the question, uh, what attracts you to Serbia? It's people oh, and nice. it's kindness and, and, and the way they, you, I mean not they, you, uh, show interest in, in real everyday fresh home cooking. Because if you were not then I would probably not be here. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're right. But, you know, there's a belief uh, that uh, our cuisine is one of the finest in the world. Is there any truth in that statement, actually? Well, I can definitely say that you have one of the finest ingredients and, and, and dishes in the world, yes. As, you know, every country has something special. And as a, as a traveler, yes. you have the pleasure of, of discovering so many, so many foods and cultures. And, uh, and it's true that you can learn the people, learn to know the people by what they eat. Because really? I think everything Sanya eats becomes Sanya, so it's... it's well, you're pretty right. <laughs> you're so right. <laughs> okay, before we uh, start uh, revealing the secrets of your cooking, uh, Marano, I'd like... Marano. <laughs> we will talk interview. about... No secrets. I know there is. We will talk about spices and uh, the way you prepare food. Mm-hmm. But first, I would like to uh, present you, uh, who you really are to my listeners. So... Uh, tell me, uh, what made you fall in love in, in cooking, in kitchen? Oh, that, that's very easy and it started very soon. Okay. I grew up with, uh, with happily, both my parents. Uh, my father was a sailor, worked for the Holland America line. My mom was, as you would call it now, an old-fashioned style housewife, meaning she didn't have another job as taking care of her family. Um, but she didn't really like to cook. This really? might sound strange. <laughs> Cooking was not her hobby. However, she was a great caretaker. Whenever people, family or friends from my school visited us, or me or my sister, they always were invited to stay f- for dinner or lunch. Oh. Every time. Because my mom felt that, you know, you could not send people away saying, bye-bye, you need to go because we are, we are, we are going to eat. My mom uh, uh, <laughs> is the same one. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's then you always, you know, it's, it's, it makes nice table conversation and it's good to share even... Um, my mom had this saying in Dutch, wie geeft wat hij heeft is waard dat hij leeft. And that rhymes. That it would mean a person who gives whatever he or she has is worth living. I mean, you just half is enough. My yes. mom was a type. She made a soup. And when there were more people than expected, she just added water. And nobody really knows. She didn't tell anybody. <laughs> but that was just happened. Water to the soup. But I mean, yes. That was good. And my father had this adventurous story, the t- stories to tell as being a sailor man. And oh, it really? was a combination of all these exciting stories about flavors of the world, what comes from afar is delicious, be open to any culture, don't judge too much, uh, be adventurous. And then the, the, the caretaking of my mom yes. uh, made me ask, well, the most important question maybe in my life when I was about eight or nine years old, okay. mom and dad, can I become a cook? I mean, for a job. Okay, and what and they, they say? say to- yes, you you can. Then let's find out how what at what age you can go to a cooking school. And that there appears to be uh, a possibility just after basic school, so after primary school. Most people don't do this; they go to some kind of university. Yes, and that was um, uh, advice to me as well to go to university by by the school because they say you have learning capacities oh, and, yes. and, and you should you know uh, um, um, obtain the maximum of, of education but I felt it if I would go to a university I would be in a waiting room for four more years and I wanted to cook so I subscribed for cooking school and uh, at the age of 12 at the age of 12 yeah, you, you just can yeah that's nice okay so we revealed that you start with 12 
start cooking. So is there a specific type of meal you prefer to cook? I honestly like to cook what other people like me to do. Really? I'm the kind of, if I were playing in a band, yes. I would play requests. Okay, and, like and a jukebox. Yes, yes, you can just... <laughs> in case. <laughs> but just people don't throw in a dime or <laughs> they don't throw in money. <laughs> no, but yeah. really, I mean, um, as, as a cook, it, it, you don't cook for yourself. Of course, I have my favorite foods to eat and some preparations are more interesting to do because they are challenging or might be more difficult or they're playful or, or yes. you like to eat them. But in, in general, I like to cook what ever makes you happy or, or I mean that's that's the most satisfaction my my Michelin stars if you have, don't have a restaurant are empty yeah. plates preferably licked clean like a dog licks his bowl yeah. <laughs> I mean that <laughs> proves right this was exactly what you wanted so is there uh, any specific meal here in Serbia that you like the most oh yeah I've, I've said it after no secret Kaimak is by far Kaimak. I love that so much you know I was yes. already a fan of clotted cream in, in England with, with with scones and, and muffins, of course, but Kaimak is even way better. It's it's slightly salty, it goes well with sweet, maybe because of that. Yes. It still has this interesting texture that is not so smooth like mascarpone is, because there's, it's just very smooth, but this has interesting texture, is exciting, it, it, it really makes so much things better so yes and, yes. and at first I was disappointed because um, I could not find that in Western Europe really there is no kind Kaimak? Like that. no no uh, I found a, a, a kind of similar product in Turkey where they serve it on uh, on uh, the uh, baklava yes but now I think well it's that's the a part of the charm of coming to Serbia then I can have it again so yes. maybe just let it stay here and I will come and eat it here uh, anyway some of the best foods are often tasted in its own country. That's very good. Yes. So let's talk about food. Food has healing powers. Mm -hmm. And uh, lately everybody talks about the significance of healthy diet, actually. Uh, you've been half uh, away around the world. So tell us, do people actually eat healthily? Yes, people do. I mean, really? uh, they also eat unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, but and you know, your Serbia is not healthy. Health so conscience? No. no, I think no. not. But I What think, do you think? It, 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 it will come more and more. You see that in many cultures, eventually it'll, it'll come. Um, well, we come from, if I look back one generation, if I may, the, again, mm -hmm. the generation of my parents, they were the people uh, who grew up and had their careers after World War II, yes. when there was shortage of any products. And uh, the, the, the families that, that were, let's say, in charge or the generation from the, the 50s and the 60s is tricked by the food industry, giving them the lie that, well, you don't need to cook because you deserve better. It's the same way as they said, well, you don't do the dishes, you buy a, a dishwasher because you're too good to do the dishes. You earn a second or a third vacation. Maybe you need two cars and, and, and things like this. And they started selling those silly packages of, of food concept in the supermarket saying this is chicken pavlova for example or, 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 uh, 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 or beef stroganoff and there's this a, a, a box like a shoe box yes. with a nice picture in front and if you buy it and you open it it's just two bags of powder there's no fresh vegetables there's no meat it's just spices yes. and maybe maybe some powder to make to make uh, um, uh, potato puree yes but it's fake it's like a trick and they tricked you but the generation of my parents started to believe the food industry and therefore a whole generation as I'm a product of this generation uh, didn't see their parents cook fresh anymore so they lost track of, of how do sprouts grow what does grain look like where wheat I mean a lot of people are on the highway in their cars yes. and they look outside and they see well there's something green but but <laughs> what it is how figs or apricot grow or how leek starts and and so we lost track of of real products and i think therefore um, cooking shows and, and food magazines food blogs even hopefully talks on radio yes. help with the um, uh, 
to reintroduce basic cooking again and it's I sort of lost track of, of the question now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, we're talking about uh, eat healthily. But yes, okay. Yes. Well, uh, uh, what are the basis of uh, healthy eating and how do we recognize uh, which food are healthy or which uh, are not, considering we can buy anything in the markets, as we already said that? Well, I think uh, the best diet, how do you say it in English, is is the E O H the E O H diet? So okay. eat only half. But, okay. but I mean, uh, I think the, the the best way to have a healthy diet is to have variation. It's not that you need to stick. Don't look for another diet. I mean, there are different names. A lot of diets have books and 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 vitamins or powders or drinks but it's they need to be sold so therefore they some diets may be okay but there are a lot of crash diets that yes. make you slimmer but can you keep up with this the rest of your life most people when they follow a diet they lose weight weight and then after three months or even six months they start gaining weight again a lot of time even more yes uh, well, the healthy way of living is uh, variation variation is the spice of life in in almost everything but if you have a, a, a good variation eat something different every day and not repeat that weekly but try to find some kind of a menu that's running over two weeks and then start repeating again the ingredients um, moderation yes. meaning not too big portions we are used um, my mom and dad said you have to finish your plate otherwise you go to bed early or, or you know you yes. get some kind yes. of penalty so you we, we all grew up with if we look at our plates we need to finish this so if you just plate two thirds of the quantity starting with your children then, then that is the portion they should eat and you get used to that it's just portion control and uh, I don't think fatty foods or sometimes some food that is sugary like a good cake is, is the problem the real problem are the hidden fats or the hidden sugars food that we eat and we have no clue what's in it and nobody really tells you and I mean, nobody actually cares no because for the in the industry sugars fat and salt are cheap fillers yeah and make it are profitable to to uh, to put in foods so if you just think sensible and try a little bit the way your grandmom and granddad ate that kind of with the, with modern techniques and the modern variety of what we have now yeah, yeah, it calls, comes to sensibility, but uh, th that's yeah. easily said, I, I realize yes. this. Yes, so um, you've already been here in Serbia, so I wanted to, to talk about Serbian uh, food market. So um, as a person who is a professional uh, cook, I believe you're familiar with the control in food here in Serbia. So is there a developed uh, consciousness about the importance of uh, food? I don't know, to be honest, how your health control works here in Serbia. Of that, I have only been, at, been here too short, yes, too briefly. And uh, uh, the most of the time I have been, let's say honest, was with radio interviews and talked to a lot of people, but <laughs> yeah, right. not really on my own for to, to really dive into uh, what happens here. I know that in every country, so why not in Serbia, um, the food control is getting more strict. Uh, as I have the experience, if you want to open a restaurant or you just want to say, well, I make nice marmalade because I have 10 apple trees in my garden and I want to start making apple compote, put them in a jar and get them ready to sell them, you have so many regulations about refrigeration, uh, about... Uh, sanitation uh, the, the hygiene control yeah. is so very strict it's hard to start your own business nowadays because there is so much to take care of for yeah, so little many businesses rules. Yes. it's impossible yes so you need to to have the the support of a bigger company to be able to even start so it's on one side is discouraging the, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. nice and small initiatives on the other hand it's it's 
it's yeah we all want to be safe and if we just open a, yes. just a jar of marmalade which is an easy example we want to be sure that's you know without any bacteria that can make us sick it's better for you uh. not to go deep in this country <laughs> so <laughs> uh, you probably heard that uh, men hardly cook here because they consider it women's uh, women's obligation is that still so here yes, yes because it's a part of our mentality and our culture come still, on man come still. on man <laughs> so i'm i'm very curious uh, yeah. is the rest of is in is the men in the rest of Europe uh, share that Serbs opinion? I don't think so. It's becoming a bit old-fashioned. I'm sorry, <laughs> Serbian guys, but <laughs> that sounds old-fashioned to me. Um, there is, a, a, however, a difference in, in, in countries. Um, give you this example. If you look at a pastry chef school in France and you see young pastry chefs, for example, you see 80% men. If you go to Australia, in the United States, I think it's 70 to 80 percent women. Really? In, in, in I come a lot. Uh, I go a lot to the United States, in particular to Las Vegas, because there's a lot of food conventions and food competitions there mm -hmm. annually. Uh, I am a judge at the World Pastry Championships, which are held in Vegas every two years. So that brings me there, and almost all the pastry chefs are ladies. And, really? Uh, so, but in general. Uh, it starts somewhere. I truly believe, I'm convinced that generally women are better cooks than men. Really? But I, Absolutely. I, I, Absolutely. I'm opposite. I think the men are better cooks than women. I don't women. think so. I don't think so. Oh. There's another difference. <laughs> um, to work in the restaurant business and the hotel business can be stressful. It's hot. It could be, you know, uh, it, it could be rough sometimes, yes. even in communication amongst each other, because it's a stressful situation. Everybody wants to eat at the same time. There's hot oil. It can be slippery on the floor. Um, the language that is used is sometimes not the best language in the world. Yes. Yeah, look at Gordon Ramsay. I mean, people know what I mean. Yes, um, Ramsay. And um, <laughs> a lot of men, and, and I don't, I, I hope I'm not that kind of man, but I am just in general, I just try to understand this. And I thought it over so many times and I met so many people. Generally, man, there are, men are more ego driven than women. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I believe that a lot of men just cook for applause to be successful, not out of pure love for the people who eat their food. Really? And uh, I think that if you have like two restaurants and one restaurant is successful, has a Michelin star, then the neighbor just wants to have two stars and more success, so he will try harder. I see that in uh, cooking classes. If you have a, a male cooking class in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. you're students if i can may have people who come to this mm -hmm. class want to learn difficult techniques because they like to show off at home look what i can make this is so difficult <laughs> blah 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 and i can do it look look at me i'm fantastic you know, so. and more women i find that they want the real thing they don't care about applause so much they want honesty they want genuine love not only romantic love but the love for their family for their friends it, it's like your mom putting food on the table. It's truth. And I believe that on, in the long run, career-wise, uh, women who done a chef training after a few years, there are a lot of women saying, I don't want this life anymore. I don't want to go ego-driven and let me have a, maybe some quieter job, but I want it honest. Well, and, uh, and that's why so many professional chefs are men. Yes, I know that, but I thought women cook because they have to, and men cook for love. Maybe so I was wrong. So, but if I look at professional, then women have a softer touch. They're more grounded with emotion. With with they care about who are my guests, who am I cooking for, yeah. what do they really like. Ask again if you don't know. I mean, uh, there are exceptions in both ways. Yes. Thank yes. God. But <laughs> well, this is, uh, and and it's uh, if it's not considered to be cool to cook. Well, I think we're slowly proven proving the opposite with Twenty Four Kitchen. I hope. Well, yes, that's a great channel, and thanks God we have it because I think also men in Serbia start to cook because of Twenty Four Kitchen. I suppose you have a lots of funny situation that always make you laugh. 
uh, looking back what happens during your performances all around the world. So I believe we can uh, tell to my listeners some of them. Some funny situations. Yes. Oh yeah, they, they, they happen all the time. I mean, oh, let me think about it. <laughs> okay. Now I really have to help, help, help. <laughs> but I suppose that I mean, there were yeah. so many. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we laugh every day. What I is mean, the, strange thing, the, the strange thing that happens when you cook? Is there anything that can be not, not usual maybe? Well, normally, um, and, and, and nowadays I cook a lot in the studio because we record four, four yes. cooking programs per day. So if I make bakery, we make four episodes of bakery in one day. And uh, so sometimes you get a little bit more naughty or, or... And what happens a lot with me, if I start cooking a recipe, I'm a bit a dreamer. So I start also think I get other ideas. So sometimes if the camera shortly stops, oh, quick, 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 because while making this, I have an <laughs> idea of doing it so and so and so. So quickly write it down because otherwise I lose the idea. And, and uh, somehow... Uh, That's what we also make jokes in the studio a of lot, course, of course, yes. and uh, and and of course, and sometimes they try to make me laugh because the guy who's next to the camera, um, a director, sometimes uh, makes funny faces from oh no, this is this is oh no, I, I would not eat this. I mean, just without his, his arms and his body language, and then yes. it's so difficult to to not laugh. I have this little story which uh, all my colleagues in the studio say oh. Oh no, not again. Sometimes I like the little stories in between the lines. I mean, okay. you can cook, but the recipe is a recipe, you know? It always, almost every recipe start with chopping an onion. Yeah, I counted just a week before I came here. We started with 24 Kitchen on the 11th October 2000, on 1st October 2011. So uh, it's almost three years now. And I recorded... 1120 episodes bakery and easy meals together times two wow. recipes so wow. so many episodes and you don't want to know how many episodes starts with chopping an onion for example <laughs> uh, and sometimes i just talk what what also happens and i have uh, let's be honest with this one episode and 24 kitchen lasts 26 minutes we do two recipe this means one recipe takes 13 minutes because we also make television we do recipes but it's for tv yes of course so a recipe needs to take 13 minutes sometimes it can be ready in five really yes but we cannot go black so i mean <laughs> <laughs> we have to make so sometimes i'm kind of i'm really emotional and fully attention and i forget about the cameras and i'm cooking and then the director looks so, slow 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 he makes this Mika, and then they say you know still still 10 minutes to go and then i think oh my god 10 minutes i just you know so you have to, to perform play and then i then i go tell some stories or yes. the, look at this yes. ladle or look at this whisk the 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 the, 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 the nice thing about this whisk is so and so and so or i i going to change the recipe just a little not too much because i have only the ingredients in the house what was planned to have yes and sometimes i come up with this story like if i see a banana for example i like to tell this story about that, banana that um, bananas uh, you know wh why they are pendant right the banana yes okay because otherwise it would not fit in the peel right? yeah. <laughs> and in its skin but that monkeys peel a banana from the other side you know if this is a banana there's there's this stem here on this okay, side okay yes and we we always it's too unfortunately we yeah, don't I, have I, a banana I, I, here I, yes i understand take it on the stem and we yes. peel it a monkey always does it from the other side i didn't always. know that yes they keep the stem they see as a handle And with their mouth, they open it on, from the other side, which is great. Nobody realized this. And who has more? Who knows more about bananas? Is it humans or monkeys? So monkeys, I suppose. <laughs> monkeys, I suppose. Right? <laughs> so next time you're in the zoo. Okay. Like a beautiful zoo in the, in the area here. Yes, yes. Then bring a banana and look at it. Look at the monkeys and see what they do. And it's it's nothing to do with the recipe, but I I like that kind of 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 it's, information. Yeah, it's, it's just it's like just ritual, something like yes. ritual. You must have been the same, uh, Sanyo. If you if you play a record, the extra info of the performer or of the or the yes, record. Yes, yes, you're right. You have the original version of this song, so and so and so, and and if you play like. 
jambalaya from the Carpenters, which everybody knows. It's nice to say, well, it was not the original version because John Williams yes. recorded this in 1952 as a real country song, much more sober. And that's that's the nice info in between, which I that that's funny. I mean, sometimes. Uh, one time, but it was during the um, impression of friends, the wall just fell down in the studio. Of course, that was a big laugh, but we, <laughs> we, we didn't I broadcast guess. that, of course. Yeah, I can imagine. Are you familiar with Serbian Ivar? Ivar, yes. yes, beautiful. You roast red paprikas. Uh, yes. Until the skin is black. And then you put them in a bowl to, to, to get, make them sweaty so the, the peel goes off better. And then olive oil, some onions, yes. maybe some pepper, maybe, could be, if you want it spicy. Yes, right. And then right. stir it for at least an hour on a low fire. That's that's something so beautiful because it's not only the, the paprika, but thyme as an important ingredient. Of course. Yes. The fire, is it a hot fire yeah. or not? Yeah. Everything is... I think this is your typical soul food. Yes. I like yes. soul food a lot. So... You taste it and yes. you like it. Yes, many times. Okay, is there any sim uh, similar product uh, in Europe like Serbian Ivar? No, we, we, we do make paprika sauces and, and, and you have stroganoff sauce, which is totally different, but also a lot of paprika. Mm -hmm. uh, but not something like Ivar, that's really unique. Yeah. yeah. I know that the Turkish cuisine also uses a lot of this roasted paprika in yellow yes. and, and, and red. Yes. Yeah, it's a similar cuisine, Turkish yes, and yes, our. Yes. Okay, uh, that's enough talk about Serbian uh, cooking. Let's talk about yours now. What is the secret of your success in culinary business? Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew it, uh, I would say. Um, I can only say that I stay, um, uh, I always keep up a good mood. I think it, food is good mood food. That is what I make. You know, it should not make you sad, but it should make you happy. Even if you were sad, food can can give comfort. And, and yes. And even if you lost somebody and and you need to mourn, you can even have something to eat, which which somehow comfort you. Um, but stay honest to your path. I wanted to become a cook and to cook fresh. So on your way. In your career, there sometimes are moments that there are temptations to to take the easy road. Yes. I mean, um, like buy a ready sauce and, and or, or, or you know some some so, so some half cooked prefixed meal and just add some last garnishes and then tell say people that it's yours. I mean, I've never been tempted. The, many people tried, but I said no, and then I. I was always in a position to say, thank you very much, maybe for you, but not my cup of tea, but thank you. I yeah. Mean, saying, saying, <laughs> I don't like to say no, so explicit, but you can still try to to keep away from from this. Uh, a good example are artificial food colors. I'm very strict in this. Oh, yes. I think yes. it's ridiculous, and I cannot understand at all that people putting paint in their food, and it is paint. And although regulation state it's our, it's it's you know uh, it's European uh, Union uh, uh, um, um, certified food color, but what it is exactly, hardly anybody knows. Even bakers who use this, they don't know exactly. Uh, in 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 savory or salty cooking, it's not a big problem, but especially in pastry, marzipan colorings, or or if people make a mango mousse cake or on a or or strawberry, if you cook strawberries, they become a little bit brownish. Yes. So a mousse becomes or a cake becomes pinkish not really bright red and I th would say let it be but commercially you see a lot of mousse cakes that are colored <coughs> different uh, colors uh, yes and I ask I know so many bakers as I started to realize this I saw colleagues using food color and then I got a teaspoon of this food color and asked them do you have kids most of them had said, would you give a teaspoon a day to your baby to your kid and every single baker said no way Right, your customers are fine, but your children, children, or your wife, or, or, or your husband, no way. That means yes. something to me. Of and course. I promised never ever to even touch artificial food colors. So I can only work with cocoa powder, with curcuma, with green tea powder, or wheatgrass powder, or real proven or beet juice. 
and um, and I don't even touch it. If somebody makes a beautiful cake with colored marzipan, then I can still compliment this person that it looks beautiful, but I won't taste the crumble of it <laughs> if I yeah. suspect food color. And only thing, but it's like it's a friendly gorilla oh. because therefore I hope I don't tease my colleagues too much. I don't judge them in public. I don't slaughter them. You know, I'm not wearing a harness and a sword, but just no, thank you. But no, not for me. Yeah, of and course. And I hope right. that You're eventually right. people start realizing uh, why all the all all the colors. Yes, I agree with with you definitely. But uh, I've heard that love can be a true spice. It is one of the cooking. most. I think three pillars: food, love, and music. It's it, it's three things, but you can one thing can replaces the other. It's it's what brings harmony in our life. I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and you can really. Taste. Yeah, uh, spices define the taste of uh, every meal. That's obvious to all of us. Yeah. Uh, but can you tell us which spices we should uh, use with which meals and why? Oh, you you have the whole evening or the whole night? <laughs> I mean, spices differ the cuisine, and they uh, I mean they are typically for for your your cuisine. You know also why? Because in the old days when uh, uh, people sometimes traveled long time not always because they wanted sometimes they 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 were forced to travel the only thing they could bring on their travels which was from their culture were the spices because they were dried foods so they were not perishable they could not bring the nomad and the 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 the, the, the long travels from 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 one place to the other they could not bring fresh meats or vegetables so they adapted to their new lands with the ingredients that were there but they brought their own spices to keep re retain their 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 flavor profile of course there is um, vanilla is seen as as um, a spice for for sweet but you could also use it on chicken or a light fish and yes. it's well known to be beautiful with lobster or with shrimp for example cinnamon is a spice that in western europe is seen as typically in desserts you cannot imagine an apple pie without cinnamon And yes. then you go to the Arabic wor world and the first thing you encounter flavor-wise is the combination of meat stewed for a long time, for example beef or lamb, with cinnamon, yes. often combined with cumin or cardamom in the Arabic countries. And that, that was a revelation for me s some years ago. Uh, the Cajun cuisine, the first staple product that you come up with is Cajun spices which is a mixture of lots of different peppers, uh, oregano, thyme, and sometimes basil, it depends on, and paprika powder. And uh, it, it refines the Cajun cuisine. Look to Morocco, they have a beautiful name called Ras Al Hanout, meaning the best of the shop. Yeah. And it can be a mixture of sometimes 50 different spices, even rose petals. And if you add just a dash or a, a teaspoon of Ras Al Hanout, the spice mixture, in a stew or in even a cookie batter, you have the the, the, the fairy tale of the of the one thousand of the thousand and one uh, yes. nights. I mean, yes, the, 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 the Aladdin and the Wonderland. Oh the, yes, the, the, it's so romantic. You. You're getting into a romantic mood by only smelling the scent, the, 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 the scent of the spices. What do you think about G uh, GMO food? Uh, it's a shame that that uh, we've gone so far that that it's we become larger and larger and larger and larger, and and that there is no emotion left in these types of foods. It's processed, it's for profits, it's so many tons here, it's, it's the same as, as car productions and nobody asks, do we really need so much cars? Or, or, yes. And I'm happy that you see more and more, even in countries that are well known for, for these large uh, uh, productions, are the farmers markets and our, our uh, smaller Uh, initiatives um, and if people taste the difference then the choice is made easy only the only obstacle of course is that biological products are more expensive yes and people are only willing to pay this if they really taste the difference yes I agree 
Okay, uh, a lot of women now are listening to our program and uh, I know that they would like to uh, know your favorite recipes, but we don't have time for all of them. That's so uh, many. And it's a lunch time <laughs> yes. almost, so could you recommend one meal for today, for today's lunch? Lunch. You know what? It's strawberry season, right? Yes. What, which is not not too difficult and easy to remember because this is radio, so you don't want to have a paper and a pen and to write amounts of ingredients. It's just a, a, a global idea that okay. you can work with. A combination of three things: a salad. Okay. You combine one third of fresh strawberries. Okay. And you just with one third of tomatoes. Preferably cherry tomatoes. And one third of cooked shrimp. Okay. You could also use chicken, but with shrimp is perfect. So cooked shrimp could be scampi or gamba or shrimp. You just cut the tomatoes in half, the cherry tomatoes or big tomatoes in, in, in small pieces. And the strawberries, depending on their size, just half them or quarter them. And then you mix the three ingredients and you make a dressing, so a vinaigrette, which is made of either lemon juice or some a, a, a tablespoon of, of, of vinegar. Okay. Add, if you have, a little bit of mustard, salt and pepper. Yes. Okay. Mix this, so vinegar or lemon juice, salt, pepper and mustard. And then add olive oil. Three times as much olive oil than the vinegar is. And if possible some fresh basil basil goes fantastic with tomatoes we all okay. know caprese yes but yes also with strawberries and then you can mix in any salad like rucola or any green salad leaves that you have or maybe this mixed green salad mix them together and you have such a beautiful salad you have the tomatoes you have the strawberries they blend in very well it smells like summer it looks like summer you want to go on vacation you put your swimming trousers yes. on and have holiday and just with some roasted bread it's absolutely beautiful and it's a typical summer salad I will try it after the show. Well, thank you, Rudolf, for uh, meeting thank you, you Sanya, and speaking to, to you. I hope I see you more in Serbia and enjoy your stay here. What wow. can I say? You know, nice people always meet again. That's what my mom yes. said. And she was right. <laughs> <laughs> so, till next time. Till next time. Have a nice time here and see you next time. Thank you. Slušate prvi sa zvezdama sa Sanjom Veličković. Samo na prvo.